Welcome to the Worldwide Center of Mathematics. Today, I'll be going over this week's problem of the week. For the full problem and solution transcript, you can see the link in the description of this video on our YouTube channel. So this week's problem of the week asks you to create a proof of the Pythagorean theorem. So there are many well-known proofs of the Pythagorean theorem, but it's kind of fun to get a little bit creative with it. In fact, um, one of the previous US presidents, James Garfield, created his own proof of the Pythagorean theorem, which you can also find uh, on our YouTube channel. Uh, from Jacob. He did a proof in his Math Minute videos of James Garfield's Pythagorean Theorem proof. So I have today, I have two proofs for you, uh, both based on geometric kind of conceptions. So the first one here, which was given to you in the hint on the problem of the week, is this here. We have a, a square inscribed inside of another square. So the interior square has side lengths all equal to C. And the, so I di I've divided this out here the outer square into the side lengths have two, uh, two, dis two different lengths. We have A and B. So the longer ones are always going to be B, and the shorter ones are always going to be A. So we're going to try to use our knowledge of the area of a the formula for the area of a square and the formula for the area of a triangle to create, to kind of have the Pythagorean theorem kind of fall out of what we're going to be doing, which is actually really cool, really cool kind of a beautiful proof. So first of all, we're going to create two expressions for the area of the large square. So we can think of the area of the large square as using the formula for the area, base times height, or just each, the, each side length squared. So you notice here that each side length is going to be, have length A plus B, because every side length has an A length and every side length has a B length. So what we can do is we can describe it as A plus B squared. Okay. And so now we can just FOIL this out. So we get a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. OK, so now we'll leave that b for a second here. Well, we come up with a second way to express the area of the large square. So if you notice here, we can also express the area of the large square by the sum of the interior inscribed square plus the four outer triangles here. And I should note that these are all right triangles. So OK, so first of all, we know the area of the in interior square is just going to be c squared because we have each side length equal to c. And then the area of each of these outside triangles here is going to be 1 half base times height. So the base is a, and the height is b. So we have four of those squares because we have here 1, 2, 3, 4, excuse me, triangles. So four of those triangles. So four, and then the area for the triangle, which is 1 half base, which is a, times height, which is b. OK, so now we know that these two things both describe, these two formulas here both describe the same area. So we can set them equal to one another. So in fact, here I'm just going to bring down a squared plus 2ab plus b squared from over here. OK, so now I'm going to distribute out the 4. So we have c squared plus 4 times 1 half is just 2. So we have plus 2ab is equal to a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. OK, so as you can see, now we have a common term of 2AB on both sides. So we, if we just subtract 2AB from both sides, cancels out to 0. And we are left with here, as you can see, C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared, which is, in fact, the Pythagorean theorem. OK, get a little square here. OK, great. So that's our first geometric proof using this diagram here. And so now, we can use a slightly modified version of the same diagram over here. So as you can see, we're going to have kind of the same idea going on where we have, we're going to find two separate, uh, two different ways to express the area of the big square on the outside. So here, we know that the area of the big square is going to be equal to c squared. So c squared is one expression for the area. Uh, we can do a equals if we want here, a equals c squared. OK, because that's just base times the height here. OK, and so now we can think of a second way to express the area uh, of this entire big square out here as a sum of the area of this interior inscribed square here and the sum of all of these, the four outer triangles here, which are, as I should note, they're all right triangles. OK, so this might not be quite as intuitive to us. So first of all, it's easy to kind of see what the length or what the area of each one of these triangles would be. So we have four triangles. So we have A here is going to be equal to four times the area of each one of these triangles. So 
same thing as what we had before, where we have a base of length A and height of length B. So we have one half AB. So that describes the four outer triangles. And now we want to know the area of the inscribed square on the interior. So as we can see here, this line has length, the total length of B, and this small length here is going to be A. So each of these lengths here of the sides of the inscribed square are going to be B minus A. So this entire length of this line minus a small chunk is going to give us this here, B minus A. So now, for the area of the entire square, we can add on, we have four times the area of each one of these triangles here, plus B minus A quantity squared, because we have B minus A times B minus A, which is base times height of that interior square. Okay, so I'm going to simplify this out here by multiplying 4 times 1 half, which is going to be 2AB, plus, and then B minus A squared is going to be B squared minus 2AB plus A squared. Okay, and that is equal to A. So now we know that these two expressions here, we have A equals C squared, and then A is also equal to 2AB plus B squared minus 2AB plus A squared. So as we can see here, we have 2AB plus 2AB and minus 2AB. So those are going to cancel out. So those will cancel out. And we're left with here b squared plus a squared, which is trivially equal to a squared plus b squared. And as we can see here, a is equal to all of these things, and a is also equal to c squared. So we can say a is equal to c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared, which is, once again, the Pythagorean theorem. OK, and that completes our second geometric proof. So there are many possible proofs that you can do kind of based off of the same idea. Um, and it's very interesting to kind of see what you can come up with. So if you come up with something cool and interesting, definitely let us know in the comments section. So for more Problem of the Week videos, you can click on our playlist here. To subscribe to us, you can click here. And to visit the Center of Math website, you can click here. Thank you for watching.